This video is going to talk about programming graphical user interfaces, or GUIs. When people think about computer programs, they generally think about graphical programs, things like your web browser or word processor. Nowadays, once you have a web browser, there are also many online applications, but there is still a place for local programs running on your own computer. The problem is, when teaching programming, we often start by teaching command line programs or applications without a graphical interface. There's a good reason for this in that GUI programming can be hard or involve writing a lot of code, although that's not necessarily the case, as I'll explain later. This video isn't going to explain how to create GUI programs, but instead cover some of the tools that can help. This is more a talk about my current decision, but it may be useful if you're looking at programming a GUI for your own project. I've also created other videos on getting started with programming graphical programs and some game programming made easy. So if that's what you're interested in, see the links in the descriptions. For this, I'm going to be talking about different ways of creating GUIs. As you can see from some of the example programs that have flashed past, I've created a number of graphical programs. But when it comes to GUI programs, rather than games or web-based programming, I've not really created a big project centered around a GUI until now. I'll talk about these two projects later. Before choosing the GUI libraries or framework, we need to start with a choice of programming language. I've created some programs, including GUI programs in all of these languages, although I don't necessarily still have some of the examples or they likely won't run without some further development to bring them up to date. For example, one of my first ever GUI programs was in Tickle TK. And whilst that's still around and it's used in the background of libraries that are still in use, you're unlikely to program directly in Tickle TK these days. The same with Perl, which I've used for a graphical auto queue system for a stage show. Perl is still used today, but it's unlikely to be top of many people's list when programming a GUI application. Java is a much stronger contender. When I first tried GUI programming in Java, that was before Swing was fully integrated into the language, I didn't find it the easiest to get started with. I believe it's much better today, and I've done a little GUI programming since, but not really much of it recently. I have done some programming with Java on a mobile phone when I studied for my computer science master's degree, but for phones I've usually created web-based interfaces which I've run in a browser instead. Processing is an interesting programming language. Processing is not used much commercially, although the Arduino IDE originally started from the processing IDE. It is however a good way to get started with graphical programming, as it's designed to make it easy to get started in programming graphics. I did create some standalone code in processing, but mainly I created web apps, which broke when the web browser security model was updated. It's not something I'd really consider using today. Which brings me to Python, a language which often comes top of my list of programming since I first learned it. It's easy to learn and I like how clean and structured the programming is. I've also programmed in C and C++ which is very powerful, but with allocated memory and the complexity of data pointers, it can be easy to end up with hard to fix bugs. For me, it was between Python and C++. The great thing about Python, it makes it easy to create code that can run on Linux and Windows with minimal porting, so that's the one I chose. This is just a small selection of programming languages available. I've deliberately not included some other languages like Scratch, which is now usually web-based, but there are also some other programming languages that may be worth considering. What do you think about these? Are there some other programming languages you prefer? Please leave a comment if you disagree, but please respect other people's opinions. We don't need another flame war over which is the best programming language. Having chosen Python as the programming language, there are still lots of options for creating a GUI. Note, in terms of terminology, some of these may call themselves a framework, some a toolkit, some are libraries or modules, or whatever term they use. There may be subtle differences with these depending upon the language and who you talk to, but to some respect, I'm going to use these interchangeably. There are also different ways of pronouncing some of the names, so again, don't stress 
but feel free to put your favourite pronunciations in the comments. So here's some examples of libraries that you can use to help with creating a graphical application. First is based around TK, which is called the Toolkit. The Python version is known as TKinter or Tkinter. This is based on Tickle TK, which I mentioned earlier, but it's adopted into Python early on. It's often installed by default and considered by many as the native GUI for Python. It is quite powerful, but in the past had a reputation of being a bit ugly compared to some more modern frameworks. This is no longer the case, but it does feel like some of the other options can provide a more professional look. The examples shown here are some of my earliest GUIs using Python, a graphical interface for controlling NeoPixels. The one on the left is an early version and the one on the right is a bit more recent. I've stopped development on this in favour of a web-based version for this application, but it does show a novel interface designed with touchscreens in mind. TK Inter is a good choice if you want something which works well across multiple platforms with minimal install requirements. One of the challenges with any GUI program is the amount of code that's needed to get started. The GUI Zero library is based on TKinter and provides an easy to use library which can help getting started. It doesn't necessarily give you the same level of control as using TKinter natively, but it makes up for it in ease of programming. I actually contributed to the development of GUI Zero. It's only small updates, but I added the ability to use call span and row span in the grid layout. I used it for a small application for creating PDF files from a database export and for an interactive quiz for a computer networking activity I created as a STEM ambassador. If you're just starting out in GUI programming, then it's worth considering as a way to get started creating a GUI. I've created a getting started video with GUI Zero, which goes through creating a program to apply simple encryption using the ROT13 cipher. See the link in the description for more information. Now I'm going to take a bit of a liberty in covering Pygame and Pygame Zero. Pygame is a library intended for creating computer games, although it can be used for creating novel interfaces. You wouldn't want to use these for creating, say, a word processor, but I have found it useful for creating graphical applications for working with maker projects. Just be aware they don't implement many of the features you would expect from a GUI library such as native buttons, menus and dialogues used to select files, etc. So whilst they are good for really unique applications, they're not really GUI libraries as you would expect. For example, the one program here is created in Pygame. It allows you to control a robot arm. It has buttons which are implemented as images and the code has to detect when the mouse is pressed on each of the buttons. However, one of the benefits is that it makes it easy to detect when the button is kept pressed, so the robot continues to move as long as the button is pressed. Pygame Zero is a simplified alternative to Pygame. It still uses Pygame behind the scenes, but needs a lot less of the boilerplate code to get started. These are some examples of the games I created for my book, Learning Game Programming with Pygame Zero, along with the data center simulator program I created for another STEM activity. There are other things you can do with Pygame Zero including Pygame Zero for makers. I created some examples for a Raspberry Pi workshop. It makes it easy to implement dashboard style features as shown in the example on the left. And the example on the right shows a completely unique interface. It allows you to control the diorama shown by clicking on the chimney activates the smoke generator and clicking on the lights of the snowman can cause them to turn on and off. I've already created a free tutorial on Pygame Zero and a video introducing Pygame Zero for makers. See the link in the description for more details. I've also published a book on game programming with Pygame Zero, available online or from good bookshops. The one thing I did consider, but I don't have any examples of my own, is PyGTK, or the latest version, which is PyGObject. I did try some coding with PyGTK, but it never used it in a real project. And PyG object is a Python package which provides bindings to G object to allow you to use GTK. It's basically the new way of accessing the GTK libraries. GTK is used by GNOME applications, so it's good for creating applications which feel at home in 
Ubuntu. The reason I didn't use GTK is that I found it was difficult to install on Windows. Whilst I do most of my programming on Linux, I do like them to be able to run on other operating systems. It's probably different depending upon how you install Python, and hopefully it's fixed compared to the problems I had at the time. But for that reason, I decided to use Qt instead. So here we have an example, PyQt, which is based on Qt or the Qt framework, depends on how you want to pronounce it, which is used by KDE and KDE-based applications. There are different ways of using Qt, including PyQt and PySide. This example is one I created using the PyQt bindings. It's a dashboard I use for monitoring the temperature and humidity inside a data center. It's only a very basic program, which was supplemental to the full BMS we had installed, but provided a quick overview of the temperature in each of the halls. Note that the data on here isn't real data. It's just an example I used to show a high and a low alarm issued. The dashboard was running on a Raspberry Pi computer connected to a large TV display. Which finally brings me on to PySide, which is an alternative to PyQt. This is the one I'm actually using for my project. But be aware, there are some implications based on which version of PySide you use. Now, each of my projects uses a different version of PySide. Firstly, what's the difference between PyQt and PySide? It's mainly a licensing issue. If you're creating open source software, that's not an issue anyway but PyQt is licensed under the GPL, which puts a requirement that you must share your source code, even if writing commercial software. If you're creating open source software, then that's not an issue. But PySide has also become the official Python module for the Qt for Python project. So that's encouraged me to use that. One downside of PySide is it's newer, and so it doesn't have the same number of examples online. But otherwise, I think it's a good choice to go with, and it's become the official library, so it's likely to stick around. The final choice was between PySide 2 and PySide 6. PySide 2 is based on Qt 5, and PySide 6 on Qt 6. The new numbering makes it less confusing going forward, with PySide being in sync with the Qt number. A slight issue with PySide is that the version you use may be dictated by the version of Python, which is a little frustrating, in particular, newer versions of Python only officially support PySide 6, whereas some operating systems may only have PySide 2 installed. You can often install both side by side, but I did find problems trying to use the Q Web Engine view with PySide 6 on Linux and the Raspberry Pi. Q Web Engine view provides a web browser within the application, which was useful. The Raspberry Pi has PySide 2 included in its repository, but not PySide 6. The main libraries for PySide 6 can be installed easy enough from pip using PyWheel, but the QWeb Engine widgets failed to install due to dependencies and it wasn't so easy to install. Although it should have been possible to get around that by installing other libraries from source or perhaps from the experimental branch of Debian, it doesn't meet the easy install that I wanted. So for that application, which needed the web browser built in, and which would only need to run on Raspberry Pi anyway. I use PySide too. The other GUI is in early development, but it's my laser cutter model building designer application. I want this to run on either Linux or Windows, and I found if you have the latest version of Python for Windows, then you can only install PySide 6. It doesn't need the web engine view, so it was easy enough to install PySide 6 on both Windows and Linux. The next version of Debian is expected to include PySide 6, and so it's likely that other distributions will have it by then as well. Debian is usually well behind most other distributions. So hopefully it will be better in future. It does mean that the code will need to be updated. For the most cases, that's just a case of issuing a search and replace, swapping PySide 2 with PySide 6. Final decision is whether to use a GUI designer rather than coding all the widgets and placement by hand. I've normally created the GUIs manually before, coding all widgets directly into my code. For the points controller, I've done the same, coding each of the windows directly into the source code, which is a useful learning experience in getting to understand the library. But for the laser cutter model building designer, I used Qt Designer. Whilst I'm designing the application for PySide 6, hence Qt 6. 
I actually used Qt Designer 5. The reason being that for Qt 6 you want to install Qt Creator instead of Qt Designer. Qt Creator is a full IDE. Whilst it does everything that Qt Designer does, it's also got many features which are not required when you're programming Python. And it actually made it a little harder to use when just using it as a GUI designer. It was difficult to understand how to get the designer to achieve what I wanted. When I first laid out the screen and when I scaled the window, it was initially scaling the wrong parts of the GUI. Once I'd worked that out, it became easier and it's quite nice to use. So I'll be continuing to use the Qt Designer for this program at least. In summary, there's lots of choices for programming languages and within those, different frameworks and libraries. Some work better for certain programs, whether you're looking for a simplified library or your first GUI, looking to create a game or a novel interface, or looking for a full featured framework for a professional GUI application. The one I went with was PySide, based around the Qt framework. But what do you think? Did I miss your favourite one? Please let me know in the comments, but again, please keep it respectful. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.